Hi folks, thanks for checking out our Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring preview here on NBC Sports. Lee Dippy along with our IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship experts, Calvin Fish and Brian Till. Fellas, we're almost set to go. It's going to be an exciting weekend. I mean, we've come off the back of the Rolex 24 at Daytona, which we have documented for many, many years about how difficult that is. But then Sebring, even though it's half the length, it kind of the difficulty ratchets up with the bumpiness of the, the circuit nature and the competitiveness. And a lot of drivers call this race their favorite. You two know it all so well. Cal, for you, you've won this race. Why, why is it one of your favorites? I just love the event, Lee. I love the energy of the day. I mean, you get to the racetrack first thing in the morning and you're immediately in green flag mode, unlike some of the other big events like the Rolex 24, like Le Mans. You wait till the early part of the afternoon to get going. This, particularly this year, without a warm-up this year, you're going to be straight in a race mode. And then there's just the history of the event. So many iconic brands have won here over the years. You see that plastered along the pit wall gantry there at the circuit itself. And just... Some of the texture and flavor of the event, you see these campers were sofas on top. You see the guys walking around in cow suits. You see the, the bonfires through the infield and the smoke sort of like coming across the racetrack late at night. It's just a great energy there. And then the track itself, so unique, very rough and tumble, but it evolves through the day. It'll start off really nice in terms of the cool of the morning, have some good grip. It's really nasty, dirty, gritty in the heat of the day. And then the sweet spots at night for the finish. And Brian, we've seen so many years here at Sebring and at Petit Le Mans. When you give the WeatherTech Championship darkness, certainly there's fireworks both on and off the racetrack, it seems. Absolutely, and, and the event is so special, Calvin, because to me, it's like you and me. It's old school, right? I mean, it hasn't changed much over the years, and you, you think about the history here. This is one of those races that you want on your resume. You want that race win, and Lee alluded to it. You look at the Rolex 24, you look at Le Mans, they're 24 hours long, and yet, it seems to be harder to win at Sebring than it does at those. I mean, obviously, any endurance contest is challenging. But this racetrack, respect the bumps. That's the big line that everybody uses at Sebring. But you've got to respect the traffic density. And like you said, Calvin, when the sun goes down, man, it is on. And we've seen it time and time again. The final moments of this race are the most exciting. All right, guys, we've got a lot to get through, so let's keep uh, checking them off the list. Let's talk about the GTP class first, the hybrid era, the second year in this premier class of prototypes. And uh, making its debut in North America is the Lamborghini SC63. It'll feature former F1 driver and the current IndyCar driver, Romain Grosjean. We'll get into that during the broadcast window on the weekend. But, Cal, I want to come to you first and Porsche Penske Motorsport because the captain, Roger Penske, and his staff, they are on a roll. We go back to the month of May last year and Joseph Newgarden winning the captain's 19th Indianapolis 500. And, and then you scoot to the end of the year. He goes on and wins the NASCAR Cup Series Championship. We turn over into a new calendar year, wins the Rolex 24 at Daytona. And then this most recently, this past weekend in the NTT IndyCar Series, Joseph Newgarden wins again. So whatever the driver, whether it's Ryan Blaney, Joseph Newgarden, any of the captain's guys, they can't seem to be stopped, and they've really gone into a nice mode in this sports car side of things too, right? They really have. They're firing on all cylinders right now. They also won the WEC opener at Qatar a couple of weeks ago, Lee. So in the sports car world, they're now starting to demonstrate some of the pace and form that we expected 12 months ago in this new hybrid era. They got a jump start over the other three manufacturers in 2023, but it didn't really work out that way. They took a while to find their feet, but right now, they're so strong. The Porsche is so strong as well. They finished with four cars in the top six at the Rolex. They had a one, two, three finish at Qatar for the WC opener. And when I think about the winning car at Daytona, we're looking at the winning drivers right there celebrating, is the fact that Matt Campbell, he's only doing the endurance races this year. He's switching to WEC full-time. He is a man on form. He was sensational in that race at the Rolex. He then went on to win at Bathurst. He then grabbed the pole and had fastest lap at the WC opener. Felipe Nazar took the car to the checkered flag. And last year, he struggled with this new car lead, but he has now got that sparkle in his eye again. He's got the strut. He's got the feel with this race car that he can perform magic like he did at the Rolex. And he's going to be teamed with Dane Cameron again. So Dane has had four years without a victory until the Rolex win. He's been in a bit of a drought. I think when he gets his confidence back, we recognize that a three-time IMSA champ can be one of the fastest drivers in our paddock. So if he can find that confidence that NASA has in that machine, they could almost be unbeatable this year. 
Brian, we always talk about the robust nature and kind of the um, uh, kind of almost unbreakable nature of the Cadillacs and Cadillac Racing is the defending champion at the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring with Action Express Racing. Uh, they're, they're, they spread their wings across two organisations with Chip Ganassi Racing being the other one. And news in the last few days about that contract and that relationship coming to an end at year's end. Yeah, I mean, Calvin used a word when he was talking about the Penske organization and Matt Campbell and Dane Cameron. He talked about confidence. And I wonder about the timing of this announcement, because how does that affect this team, not only here at Sebring, but all season long, when you know at season end, it's all over with? And I guess there are two different ways you can look at it. And I'm talking about the team, not just the drivers, but the engineers, the crew members. The guys that are moving tires back and forth, the entire team, if you know that it's over, you've got two choices. You can just kind of lay down and go, well, you know, we're done. Or you can look at it and say, we're going to go out with a bang. And so it, it, it fires you up just that little bit more. I'm curious to know, and I think it's going to be a long time before we find out why this is happening. It was a three-year run, and this is the end of three years. So obviously their contract, Ganassi's contract with Cadillac is up. But why didn't it get re-upped? Who's going to pick it up? Will Action Express have two cars? What about My Meyer Shank Racing, who we know isn't here this year? And Mike Shank had said in years past, or at, at the end of last year, I should say, hey, we're talking to other manufacturers. We're going to be back. There's a lot of silly season yet to go. And we're just at race number two. There's so much to talk about. Hey, BT, why don't you keep the ball? Because in addition to being a former driver and a current commentator, you're also in the sports car space. You do work in race control as well, not on the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, we should say. Uh, but balance of performance, rules and regulations, it was a hot topic coming off the back of the Rolex 24 because in GTD, of course, we have two classes there, GTD Pro and GTD uh, the manufacturers, Ferrari and BMW, their respective teams were penalised after the Rolex 24 for breaches of the rules. Where do we stand heading into Sebring? Give us the update. I know a lot of fans were upset with that, but you have to think about this. Balance of performance, it's the only reason that GT racing has exploded worldwide. It's really simple. This isn't 1963 anymore. This isn't Ford versus Ferrari. Manufacturers don't build purpose-built race cars for GT racing and then just hope that they sell some on the street. They build really souped-up sports cars for the street that they then take racing. So it's completely upside down from where it used to be. And without a formula to balance the performance between front engine, rear engine, mid engine, V8, V6s, turbos, so on and so forth, you wouldn't have the growth of GT racing, not only in IMSA, but worldwide. And IMSA used to be the sole arbiter of that balance of performance, but they brought the manufacturers on board at the end of 2023. They all sat down at a table throughout the year last year and said, yeah, let's do this. So they did this December test. Each manufacturer picked their driver, their representative team to run through certain stages of the test. IMSA gathered the data and then they shared it with all the teams together. So very transparent. And that's how we went into the Rolex 24. The manufacturers basically set their own BOP. Well, guess what? As you alluded to, Ferrari, BMW, they went too fast at Daytona and they got penalized. And they got penalized because they said, this is how fast that we can go. And then they went faster. So they've turned the balance of performance. The manufacturer said, we don't want to do this anymore. So they've turned it back to the series. And I think it's brilliant on their part because now the series sets the rules. And if the manufacturer goes faster than what the series expected, well, then it's the series that made the error, and I don't have to explain it to the board of directors on Monday morning. So I think it's brilliant that the manufacturers have said, no, we're going to wash our hands of this. We're turning it back to the series. I, I, I would. None of us want that job, right? Can you imagine <laughs> no. being a, the governance on balance of performance? That would be a nightmare. Cal, we're almost out of time, but really keen to get your thoughts on the new Corvette and the new Ford Mustang at the Rolex 24 and going forward. What do you see in the future with these new two editions of these GTD cars? Well, I think promisingly, uh, certainly I think both of those camps and manufacturers, it's great to see that GM Ford rivalry rekindle again for this uh, upcoming season. But I think they had quiet starts. I think Corvette looked a little bit more solid, ended up with a top five finish. 
I think the Ford had some technical issues with the rear deck lid and the rear wing. Hopefully they got on top of that because if there's a, a track that will break a race car, it's certainly Sebring, right, with all of the bumps. But I think Corvette knows how to win. So they're running, even though it's under a different moniker now, it's still the same race team running those two cars in the pro division. For the Ford camp, they got Multimatic, great group, won races before in prototypes with the Mazda group uh, a few years ago. But they're still getting their hands wrapped around this GT machine. So I expect to see a couple more races before we see Ford really come to the forefront. But Sebring, there's always surprises. You never know. We are set for an amazing weekend. Let's give you some key times so you'll know when to tune in. Uh, and the first one really being the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship qualifying. You'll see that at 12.15, so just after noon Eastern on Friday. And then let your eyes walk further down that graphic. 9.30 Saturday morning, 9.30 a.m. Eastern. We'll begin our coverage live on Peacock for the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring. Take you all the way through flag to flag on television. USA Network kicks in at 4 o'clock Eastern Saturday afternoon for the 72nd running of the Sebring 12 Hours. We've had a bit of a break since the Rolex 24. Uh, Brian, Cal and myself and our entire team couldn't be more pumped up to bring you this coverage. It's always an eventful day and more often than not brings you a really gripping finish. You just have to look back to last year's edition. So we can't wait. Hope you can join us over the weekend. Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.